Welcome back. I just had to share this highly improbable blitz game. Right here is the screenshot from the app, the Android app on my tablet, where I usually block out my opponent's names, but this it's in the screenshot there. We both had over 91% accuracy, according to the evaluation. And if you look down there where the mistakes, inaccuracies, blunders, and missed wins are listed, neither of us had any of those. Now, we didn't always play what the computer thought was the best move, but I've only had a couple of games where I had no mistakes, no blunders, and no inaccuracies. And I've only had a couple where that was true for my opponent. But this is the first time I've ever had where both of us had none of any of those. So that was, that was pretty improbable and uh, maybe too good to be true. And I say too good to be true because when you look at the, when I run the analysis again, as you're seeing here on the PC with this, I guess a slightly stronger engine, it says I did have two inaccuracies. So it wasn't completely all zeros in both, in all those categories. However, the number, the evaluation number actually was higher on the PC. I had over 93% and my opponent had nearly 93%. Interestingly, mine is still higher despite me having two inaccuracies and my opponent not having any. I guess that's because if you look up under best moves, I had five more best moves than my opponent did. So, but still, uh, highly improbable. And let's just look at this game real quick. As with many of my games where I play with the white pieces, I opened with D4. And uh, my opponent responded with d5. As usual, I was intending to play the London system. Now, this was a 3 plus 2 blitz game, which is pretty quick, pretty short time control for me. That's one reason I say it was pretty unusual for there to be no mistakes and no inaccuracies. Now, here, when my opponent has blocked in this light squared bishop, um, I have I remember in a from running analysis on previous games that the computer says it it's just not uh, just not a great idea for me to to bring out the London Bishop at this point uh, so I didn't I blocked mine in as well which technically makes this not a London system the computer calls it Queen's pawn opening Zugertort variation which uh, be that as it may. I just remembered that from a previous analysis, so I decided to go with it. My opponent immediately plays c4, which I don't, or c5, which I don't think was their best move. And you'll see that if you're watching the engine suggestions here, we weren't always playing what Stockfish says is the absolute best move. And here, you know, in this case, I didn't play one of the top three. Um, I just added another protection to that uh, d pawn. And here, uh, it says my opponent can get gain the advantage if they bring their knight out. If they didn't play any of the top three moves at this point, uh, they took that pawn. Uh, here, I could have gained an even better advantage by taking with the e-pawn. However, I'm always a little hesitant to take with the e-pawn when my king is still in the center. Um, so I took with the c-pawn, which, you know, isn't perhaps best. Now here, on some of these, we do play the best moves. These are uh, basically a normal opening for queen pawn positions. We castled as soon as possible. Um, I did play one of the better moves there. We're getting our pieces in position. Now here, I saw that I could immediately trade off a knight for a bishop. Um, and my opponent went for it. I liked it. So came back. Decided to challenge the b-pawn right away. And we got into this queenside battle, again, where on many of these moves, neither of us were making the absolute best move. Um, I mean, here my opponent did, but we're just being careful. I'm, I'm making sure that my rook is guarded, making sure that this pawn is guarded. Um, my opponent is trying to get their pieces into play. However, they have lost... They've given up that one bishop for a knight, so that might make it a little harder to get advanced in these diagonals. Um, I actually, I wonder if I shouldn't have brought that all the way back, but anyway, 
we traded the, the dark squared bishops, leaving me with the only bishop on the board, which I thought was great. But here is actually one of the points at which my opponent had their highest advantage or could have had they made the recommended move, rook f to c8. Instead, they played rook f to b8. Uh, the computer was saying that they should have put it here instead. But again, just very careful play making sure all our pieces are protected. No mistakes, no blunders, no hanging pieces. Now neither of us have a bishop, so the bishop and knight situation worked out in the end. The center is still locked up, so knights uh, might be better in this situation. Um, I thought I was doing pretty good by having the only rook on a completely open file. Um, I was looking for this fork, which my opponent was too good to uh, to let that happen. And here I had my biggest advantage of the game, if you're looking. If only I had put my queen on a2. Um, not sure exactly why that's so much better than all the other choices. But I didn't do that. Um, I decided to uh, put extra pressure on this a-pawn, which took away most of my advantage. They challenged my rook. I challenged the queen. And here, if you let the engine run long enough, it eventually finds uh, zero, or pretty close to zero. I made what was the best move. As you see, we... And that's where my opponent ran out of time. And the evaluation is saying that if we continue this kind of play, it's just going to be zero the whole way. So anyway, I, I was pretty proud of that. I hope that my opponent... A neighborhood dog is also proud of this and uh, you know good job to both of us may we keep up the good work and thanks for watching